Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa and to our first major conversation this morning. Uh, the federal government has of Nigeria has concluded plans to terminate a uh, report C, uh, the presidential amnesty program in May 2023. Now, it was gathered that the, the office of the national security advisor had directed the interim administrator of the amnesty program, uh, Major General Barry Indionu, retired. Uh, to commence the process of winding down the program. Now, Indiomu, who was appointed about two weeks ago, uh, replaced the former presidential amnesty program head, uh, Miland Dikio, although no reason was given for his unceremonious removal, which was announced in a statement by a presidential media aide, Femi Adesha. Now, reports also say there was uh, outrage yesterday over this reported directive to the newly appointed interim administrator of the PAP, that's the presidential amnesty program, in case you're wondering what that is. Now, stakeholders, including the pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, uh, the Ejo Youth Council, IYC, uh, a frontline human rights activist in Edo State, Kola Edokbayi, a leader of the Amnesty Program Phase 2 in Akwaibom State, Imo Okoko, and the pioneer National Secretary of the PAP Phase 3, Tam Odogu, they all reported to have said it would not be a good idea to scrap the presidential amnesty program. Now, the amnesty program was established, uh, if you remember, by the Musa Iyadu administration in 2000. And nine in 2009, as part of uh, the government's measures to, you know, stem the tide of militancy in Nigeria's oil-rich Niger Delta region, and it's come a long way uh, from the days of uh, Umar Musa Yar Adwa. Now, what exactly um, does this mean going forward for the security situation in the Niger Delta? We have joining a security expert, Hassan Stan Lambo. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Stan Lambo. Nice to have you join us this morning. Good morning. I'm Colonel Stan Labo. Thank you very much. How are you guys doing? Colonel Stan Labo, sincere apologies for that. Um, if if this is true, um, this 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 uh, move to scrap the presidential or to you know uh, round off the presidential amnesty program in 2023, um, do you think this is the time to do that? Having you think it's run its course uh, now that the Niger Delta agitation is actually over, that it's time to call it time on this, this amnesty program? Well, thank you, first of all, for having me once again. Um, I think if there is any issue, it is the timing. I would say that it's rather wrong. Um, this administration is already at the tail end of its um, exit. So I wonder why, um, you know, uh, at this point, you will begin to want to you know, shut down certain operations. Um, I would have rather be of the opinion that, look, since it's this late, allow the incoming administration to take such decisions, okay? And besides, what has, you know, um, what, what has the aim itself been achieved? I mean, for what purpose was it set up in the first place? It was to doubt the level of militants that was, you know, ongoing in Niger Delta. And of course, for obvious reasons, we know why militancy, you know, uh, attained a height that uh, was no longer comfortable in the Nigerian state. Uh, is it likely to get that region, have the youth there to become restless again and move into what they were into? Uh, I would say, well, that is left to our imaginations. Because frankly speaking, if there are no substitute or alternate program that will take over from this, given the initiative which uh, the, 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 the last uh, administrator came up with, the Niger Delta Stabilization Program, if that is not allowed to move on as an alternate plan, then I'm afraid there will be a vacuum that would need to be filled, okay? More so in a situation where government is so reluctant setting up vocational training centers that would have rather occupied most of these youths. The tendency is that when you allow youths to just hang around, not occupied, the devil is likely to make use of them. Okay? Well, um, so 
the next question would be what happens with continuity? I mean, it's a policy that was actually meant to cope the insecurity, especially in the Niger Delta region. And right now, uh, insecurity is still very big with us, especially at this point. So, um, I mean, looking at that now, how do we, you know, get to that particular point when we say that, you know, government is saying, hey, we're scrubbing this at the end of the day. Now, what happens uh, with the fact that there's a plan to relocate it to the northern part of the country? Uh, that is the point I'm making, and um, I'm afraid. Things like this, you see, when it's unfortunate, I don't want to be critical, but the point is that um, you don't go scrapping a program as this without an alternate plan on ground. You must come up with an alternative, you know, that will take over from this program. Are you going to establish vocational training centers to get most of these youths well trained and make them useful to society? We live in a country where if you are building a house today, I tell you, my dear, bricklayers will come from Benin Republic, uh, carpenters will come from Togo, and so on. Why? Because we don't have people with these skills. If you try engaging Nigerian hands, at the end of the day, you are likely to regret it, except you are actually lucky. Government should invest in all these areas. We've got, got multitude of kids out there roaming the streets. As we speak, UNESCO, uh, UNESCO has just told us that we have about over 20 million kids roaming the streets. I thought it used to be 15. Only last week, I read through a UNESCO report, and I was shocked. 20 million? What are we doing? You have 36 government and plus the federal government, 37 in this country. If each state is to establish a vocational training center, training about 1,000 kids every year, that will make a huge difference. We don't seem to have people thinking in government. That is the problem. You can't scrap a very important pro program like this without an alternate plan on ground. Nobody is thinking. Just nobody. All right, uh, Colonel Labo, um, Stan Labo. The the, the is this is this uh, amnesty program? You know, in, in, in actually, the word amnesty through this particular program that some have argued has been uh, permit me to use the word bastardized because um, people have said amnesty is a totally different concept altogether. It's not a, pro a program to, it's not a word that says they're going to pay you money so you don't, you don't fight. We're going to pay you money so you don't uh, cause trouble. We're going to pay you money so you don't break pipelines. Uh, we're going to pay you money so you don't kidnap expatriates or kidnap your own people. Uh, we're going to pay you money so you don't throw dynamites. That is not amnesty, some have argued. Um, do you think that having done what the government has done, bringing money into the situation to make it sort of like attractive, some would argue, uh, for people to engage in these acts so that they can be considered for the, the goodies coming from the federal government. Um, some have argued that they, you know, uh, crime has been rewarded. And the young people in Niger that have been told, hey, if you can become violent and make noise and shout and throw something, government will listen to you and give you money. Is, so I want you to talk about that in light of what we're hearing now coming from the PAP. Look, uh, young man, the, the, the coffee the bottle. Entire, sir. Uh, 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 you said what? Coffee. Well, uh, oh, coffee, fine, good. I think I will appreciate that. Uh, coffee, speaking frankly, the concept of an issue was faulty. The only point where money could have been brought in, and that would have been just the only place, is or would have been at the disarmament period, okay, when you were asking them to send in their arms. Bring in your arms. For every suit you bring in, we'll give you one million. For every general purpose machine gun, we'll give you two million. And so on and so forth. So that you make it attractive and see how much or how many, uh, yes, how much of ammunition, uh, arms and ammunition, you can gather, okay, from these uh, young lads who are out there 
in the creeks and uh, creating all the mayhem. That is where the lure of the water it will attract them and they will bring out everything and you compensate them because it has to go from incentive. After that, the mandate of the DGR goes into place fully. All right? You immediately now commence the, the uh, demobilization aspect, which has to do, of course, with you now uh, uh, counseling them, giving them some form of training, and so on. And you move on from there into the reintegration uh, uh, level, which now has to do with you giving them some enablement and reinserting them into society. What is the enablement? What is the enablement? The enablement now is that having trained them under the demobilization stage, you now give them all the necessary tools of work they need to commence. Then just pour through some of money for them to be able to hire, hire uh, offices or workplace, pay salaries of uh, one or two or three individuals, and so on. And this you should monitor. When you recruit one or two people who are in the job with you, that is other youth, the, 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 uh, the platform that is PAP should be able to take the salaries of such guys and make sure they are paid. And you monitor and see that they are being productive. So that's why I said, ab initial, the entire package, I think, was a bit faulty. But that could be corrected. Because as we speak right now, I'm made to understand, PAP got about 5 billion naira monthly from the, 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 the revenue profile of the federal government. We could look into this and see how it is further fine-tuned. Okay. But uh, if the decision by government is that, no, 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 we've got to shut this down, then you shut it down with an alternate plan. Yeah. But, I mean, it was going to bring me to my next question of issue of continuity because, I mean, government is a continuum. That's what we're told. And if this program was actually bought by uh, the late uh, President Musa Yaradwa, at the time in 20, uh, 2009, uh, why shouldn't we have a continuity? That's one of the characteristics of government. Well, however, the, uh, it, it seems that the government has read a, a concern which we might consider, like you've rightly stated, that is valid, the issue of revenue and the fact that this is actually taking a lot. And so how do we... Um, you know, explain the fact that this is not just necessarily a revenue issue, but, you know, it's an issue of saying there might not just be equity and fairness. Because also, on the other hand, there's also a plan to say we're relocating this. There's a plan to have this in the nothing part of the country. So is, is revenue really the issue or this is just one of the problems that we constantly talk about, the fact that we're divided as a country? Well, in between, I lost you, Albert, and I'll put the pieces together and so I can respond. Okay, so I'll come back to it again. So yeah, now the I government is saying that uh, if you look at the revenue uh, expenditure or what we're actually gulping on a monthly basis, it feels like revenue is the, is the problem. But also, my concern is that government should be a continuum. And if government should be a continuum, then it should continue because it's just one of the ways to tackle insecurity, especially in the Niger Delta that was introduced by the then Yaradua's government, of course, uh, late President Musa Yaradua. Now we have, is it really the issue of revenue or is the fact that we as a country, it, it might just be an issue that we're further divided? Is that we're further divided along religious and, uh, you know, tribal lines. Because that's the plan, to relocate this to the nothing part of the country. So is really revenue the challenge of this discontinuation of the program? Or you have all the sentiments and interests? Uh, first and foremost, I think uh, revenue is the uh, major concern here. Because you would agree with me that... Um, uh, the entire country uh, is beginning to experience a downturn in terms of revenue. And um, the government is uh, in a very tight corner when it comes to uh, resources, especially financial. And um, it's doing all the things it can to see how much can be saved for it to be able to meet other commitments, even though 
some of us have the opinion that um, uh, all you need to do is look inwards and see how you can block all the, or some of the leakages that are on there. You know, at times we see from outside government, we see the level of wastage that goes on in government and you just laugh and wonder whether do these guys really know that this country is broke uh, because they, are, they, they go about it as if the country is not broke. And that's how you find organizations like ASU not taking their students and most of us lending our support to the lines of action taken by ASU. Let me not digress, however. Uh, in answering your question, I would say that it is revenue issue. It's, it has to do with the revenue profile of the country. And then secondly, too, it is important for us to know that uh, it's not as if this thing has been shifted to the north, but the situation up north in the, in the, in the, in the northeast uh, has necessitated a similar project to come up to, okay? It's not as if it has been shifted. Uh, but uh, I, I will continue to say the timing to close down this one is wrong. It is wrong. We must look at uh, what actually informed this project in the first place and to what extent have we driven it Hassan, as the my, process My question would now be, if, if revenue so is the issue, I mean, if, if revenue is the issue that we understand, we agree, that is a, a major challenge. So what funds would be used to fund uh, that of the program in the northeastern part of the country? Where are we going to get that, the that revenue? That's the point I'm making. That is the point I'm making, that the government, the government is trying as much as possible to squeeze and see how it could find additional money. And so okay, preference has been placed. Commitments. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, how's the stand level? Uh, preference has been placed for... Yeah. Okay. So, sorry. Yeah, sorry if you had concluded your... your but you... you okay. but, yeah. Go on, please. Go on, please. Well, if, if, you, say, if you say preference has been placed, I wouldn't know if any preference is in place. All I'm saying is that um, <laughs> the government has commitments on ground. It has misused the resources at its disposal. It is now finding itself in a tight corner, and it is busy doing all, all the things it can do. And probably it thinks they should, you know, wind up setting programs. And maybe, unfortunately, the Naja, uh, the, the, the amnesty program happens to be one of those. They have a map maybe to, uh, to, 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 to immediately, you know, close up. And things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I, I wouldn't just boldly say preference as a place. No, no, no. Okay, Colonel, sure um, um, the, in, in the bid to look at, you know, areas of, in, you know, overhead of expense in the national budget to, to cut down, to reduce, to see how they can um, uh, reduce government spending, uh, will you blame the administration for looking at the presidential amnesty program? Bearing in mind, number one, like you said, over the years, at least five billion naira has been committed to this program. Number two, it's been riddled with corruption. I mean, we know the history of the heads of this this program who've had issues. You, some of who are your your, your colleagues, servicemen, you know, um, who've had issues, questions, probes have been removed. A lot of questions surrounding their uh, handling of the funds. Uh, number three, the Niger Delta has the Niger Delta Development Commission. The Niger Delta has the Ministry of the Niger Delta. The Niger Delta has 13% derivation. You talked about the need to look at this part of the country to do everything possible to address youth restiveness and unemployment and every other thing, just like you have in other parts of the country. With all the Niger Delta has, is that not enough? NDDC, Ministry of Niger Delta, 13% derivation. Fine arguments. That's another side of the of the of the, of the argument, which I deliberately didn't want to go into. Um, <laughs> frankly speaking, I think there are lots of availed platforms in the Niger Delta, which attracts funding from the federal post. Which, of course, somebody would have said, "But look, can't one of these platforms handle this?" You have reeled out a good number of them. You see, at times, or uh, let me say, the time when a region like the Niger Delta or South, whatever, may well cry marginalization from the federal government, I think it's over. 
enough has been done. What we are now witnessing is a situation where Niger Delta indigents themselves that are in charge of most of these platforms have become uh, a part of the looting uh, uh, process ongoing. They have become part of wastage. How can the region account for what comes into it by way of financial funding and financial uh, uh, provisions? It's so difficult. On the other hand, have you ever had the federal government, has anybody been prosecuted? No. Yet we claim we have an administration that is fighting corruption. I have not seen anybody from any of all these organizations or platforms in the Niger that have been prosecuted. People say the amnesty program has been abused, is that another? What have we done all those who have abused it? <laughs> we are really fighting corruption. <laughs> this is the way to fight corruption. Then, uh, oh, it's interesting. You are just asking people to come in and be corrupt. Government has got to be firm. Government has got to pick most of these guys, get with them, and let the court of law take a decision on them. Thirdly, I will continue to recommend this. The earlier we reintroduce the death penalty into our law books, the better for us. The, 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 the National Assembly has got to think about this seriously. Otherwise, I can assure you, sorry, one individual will jump up and sell this country out completely, pocket money, and disappear. I we shall be here, busy attending night videos. <laughs> well, we, we, have, we have to call it a day. Uh, interesting way to, to, to learn. Um, Colonel Hassan Stan Labo uh, just got me laughing there. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, thank you so much for your time. We will definitely look out to see where this goes. But I think the thesis of what you're saying is that the Niger Delta stabilization, stabilization program um, as put up by the guy the, who was the, the previous guy maybe should be maintained yeah. um, as well of gradually you know, winding this down to look at other ways and other yeah. aspects of investment by the government serve the Niger Delta. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay, we, we have to move on now. Of course, we have more conversations coming up. Mercy? Yeah, definitely. But as a way of equity, justice and fairness, is that if we say that uh, we probably might be faced with the issue of resources and financing for the project, then it would it be necessary for us to have, you know, replication of a replica of that same program in another region at a time where we need to be very sensitive about our, our collectiveness as a country. We'll take a break now and when we return, it'll be time for us to uh, look at our second conversation. Please stay with us.